This video is going to show you one method that we use to assess the linear regression model. Thinking back to the previous class, the regression line is written in the form y hat equals b naught plus b one x, where y hat is the predicted value on the regression line. b naught and b one are the statistics for the intercept and slope. These are calculated based on the sample data that we have. However, like all statistics, B0 and B1 are estimates of the true relationship between X and Y. So to see if a relationship actually exists between the variables, we need to do a hypothesis test. We need to test to see if the slope B1 differs significantly from zero. Taking a look at the scatter plot between GPA and ACT score, we can plot the regression line. We found last class that the equation of the regression line is y hat equal to 4.58 plus 10.07x. But the question that we really need to answer here is, is 10.07 significantly different from zero? To relate what we're doing here with the slope and the intercept, back with what we've already done throughout the course of the semester, we can compare the notations for population parameters and sample statistics. For the mean, mu was our population mean, and x bar was our sample mean. For the variance, we use sigma squared to denote the parameter, and s squared to denote the statistic. For proportions, p represented our population proportion, and p hat represented our sample proportion we have a very similar relationship with the regression line. B0 represents our sample statistic for the y-intercept, and we're going to let beta0 denote the true population parameter for the y-intercept. Similarly, B1 is the sample slope, so we'll let beta1 represent the true population parameter for the true relationship, the true slope of the regression line. We can now take this information about the parameters beta naught and beta one and formulate a regression model. The regression model is similar to the equation of the regression line, but there are a couple subtle differences. Our regression model has y on the left side of the equal sign instead of y hat. Y is going to stand for the actual value of the response variable from the data. On the right side of the equation, we have beta naught, plus beta 1 times x plus epsilon. Here, 
x is going to be the actual value of a predictor variable from the data. Beta naught represents the true y-intercept for the line that fits the population. Beta 1 is the true slope of the regression line that fits the population. And epsilon represents the error between the actual and the predicted values of y, since we already know that not every observation is going to lie directly on our regression line. Now keep in mind that B0 and B1 are the best estimates of beta0 and beta1. And beta0 and beta1 are the true population parameters. Since beta0 and beta1 are parameters, we never substitute in numbers for beta0 and beta1 in a regression model. Our ultimate goal in regression is to test to see if the slope of the regression line is significantly different from zero or not. As a result, our null hypothesis whenever we formally test the slope is going to be beta1 equal to zero. What this does in the regression model is it says that the y-intercept is the best estimate for all values of x. Plugging in zero for the slope would yield y equals beta naught plus epsilon. So the slope as well as the predictor variable drop out of the model. Another way of thinking about this is that knowing x gives you absolutely no information about y. There is no relationship between your predictor variable and your response variable. The alternative hypothesis for testing the slope is going to be beta 1 not equal to 0. What this means is that your linear regression model is going to be y equals beta naught plus beta 1x plus epsilon. This tells us that x and y do have some sort of linear relationship. The type of the relationship is going to depend on the sign of the slope. A couple of notes whenever we perform a hypothesis test on the slope. We always use a 5% level of significance when testing regression parameters. And we generally don't test the intercept since it really doesn't impact whether or not x and y are related. All the intercept tells us is where it crosses the y-axis and we're not overly concerned about where that occurs. This is an example of a linear regression output that we would get from Excel. There are three different sections here, and each section gives us different information that we could potentially use. Notice up top that we have something called multiple R. This multiple R is going to denote the correlation. Below that we have R squared. R squared is our coefficient of determination. Moving down to the second output, we have an ANOVA output. We're not going to use this directly right now, but we'll take a look at this later on whenever we talk about multiple regression. The third output we'll call the coefficient output. The coefficient output is the output that's going to allow us to test whether or not the slope of the regression line is significantly different from zero. Let's take a closer look at the coefficient output for using GPA to predict ACT score. What you should notice first is that there are two rows of statistics. The first row represents the intercept, but we typically only use the coefficient column for the intercept because we don't actually perform inference on the intercept. The last row represents the predictor variable, GPA in this case. For the coefficient column, the 4.58 represents our estimated slope. In the next column over, we have the standard error of the slope, denoted S sub B1. The next column is the test statistic for testing the slope. And the final column is the p-value corresponding to the test statistic. When performing inference on the slope, our test statistic is going to follow a t-distribution, and it's calculated by taking the estimated slope and dividing by the standard error of the slope. This t statistic has n minus 2 degrees of freedom. So to formally test whether or not the slope is significantly different from zero, we're going to follow the same five-step process. The nice thing about doing hypothesis tests on regression is that the output provides a lot of the information for us. 
For the hypotheses, we're going to start out with beta 1 equal to 0 versus beta 1 not equal to 0. Our test statistic comes directly from the output, 2.518, and it has 19 degrees of freedom. We had 21 observations altogether, and minus 2 gives us our 19 degrees of freedom. The p-value of this test is 0 0.021. The decision that we're going to make is to reject the null hypothesis because our p-value is less than 0.05. And so the conclusion that we can come to is that GPA is a significant predictor of ACT score. The slope of the regression line is significantly different from zero, so we conclude that our predictor variable GPA does significantly help us predict ACT score.